Dubai may have the world's tallest building, the world's largest indoor theme park, and the world's first rotating skyscraper on the way. But the city's man-made archipelagos, which are all in various stages of completion, Palm Jumeirah, Dira Islands, Palm Jebel Ali, the World Island, and Blue Waters Island, are very impressive. Some of the world's largest artificial islands are being built off the coast of Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Emir of Dubai and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, is the brains behind these massive projects aimed at boosting tourism and expanding Dubai's coastline. In today's video, we'll talk about how Dubai's artificial islands were constructed. So, how did the islands come to be? The process of dredging sand from the Persian and Arabian Gulf floors is known as land reclamation. The sand was then sprayed and vibro compacted into shape using GPS technology for precision and protected by millions of tons of rock. The United Arab Emirates' most populous city and emirate is Dubai. The islands were built to create more coastal real estate because the city is a popular destination for wealthy tourists. In 2001, work on the Palm Islands began. Divers surveyed the seabed, and workers used blasted mountain rock to build a crescent-shaped breakwater. At its deepest point, the crescent of Palm Jumeirah stands a little more than 13 feet above low tide sea level and sits in 34 feet of water. The lowest layer of the breakwater is sand, which is covered by an erosion-resistant, water-permeable geotextile. The sand is covered by one-ton rocks, and the structure is capped by two layers of large rocks weighing up to six tons each. A floating crane has placed a tow inside the crescent. The breakwater also has two 328-foot openings on each side to keep the 16 narrow, deep channels from becoming stagnant. Every 13 days, these gaps allow water to circulate completely. The palm islands are made of sand that has been dredged from the seabed and transported from the Persian Gulf. The Palm Jumeirah is made up of 3.2 billion cubic feet of ocean sand that has been vibro-compacted into place. Vibro-compaction involves saturating loose sand with water jets and vibrating it with probes to increase its density. When water is added to desert sand, it tends to liquefy, so it couldn't be used for this project. Designers and contractors used Differential Global Positioning Systems DGPS, to plot the palms and ensure the sand placement was within 0.39 of an inch to get the complex shape just right. During the construction of the island, workers lived on the fronds and in anchored cruise ships. According to some sources, the islands are sinking into the sea, but Nikhil denies this. Environmentalists have also claimed that the island's construction has harmed the marine environment in the area. They objected to the project, claiming that rocks and sand buried oyster beds and coral reefs, and that changing currents eroded the mainland shore. The Palm Jumeirah is currently crammed with villas, hotels, and attractions. According to Business Insider, hotels are built on the palm's trunk, while homes are built on the fronds. Long-term residents, vacationers, and real estate speculators make up the majority of buyers. Palm Jumeirah is home to around 80,000 people with a capacity of 120,000 and is a popular tourist destination. A six-lane subsea tunnel connects Palm Jumeirah to the mainland to facilitate tourism and make life easier for residents. Before releasing the water, workers used a dam to drain the area and excavate the seabed. The only public transportation option on the island is a monorail that runs the length of the palm. It opened in 2009 on the Palm Jumeirah. New resorts are still opening, and developers are financing and building luxury apartments. In 2021, an observation deck on the 52nd floor of the Palm Tower opened, giving visitors a bird's eye view of the entire island, and sprawling villas fetch astronomically high prices. Despite the failures of other islands off the coast of Dubai, Palm Jumeirah has become a popular destination for those seeking luxury and leisure. Let's take a closer look at the Palm Jumeirah and Palm Jebel Ali Islands. Palm Jumeirah is the most well-known of the bunch, with a trunk and 17 fronds shaped like a palm tree and surrounded by an almost 7-mile long crescent-shaped island that is home to Atlantis, the Palm, just one of many luxury hotels and resorts that dot the archipelago. Nikhil Properties initiated the project in 2001, and it resulted in the addition of 40 miles of much-needed beaches. Today, travelers can access Palm Jumeirah from mainland Dubai via a monorail, and an underwater tunnel connects the topmost front to the crescent. Upcoming debuts for Palm Jumeirah include the Palm Tower, with floors occupied by St. Regis Dubai and Nikhil Mall, which were set to open in 2018 and late 2017, respectively.
Work on a second Palm Island, Palm Jebel Ali, began in 2002, but due to the 2008 financial crisis, construction halted. Nikhil has since reassured reporters that Jebel Ali is not cancelled but a long-term project. If and when the island is complete, it will be 50% larger than Palm Jumeirah and feature homes built on stilts, a water park, villas, six marinas, and a sprawling boardwalk shaped into the words of a poem written by Sheikh Mohammed himself. Next is Deera Island. The idea of a third Palm Island, Palm Deera, set to dwarf the other two at eight times the size of Palm Jumeirah, was introduced in 2004. However, in 2013, Nikhil shifted gears and renamed the project to Deera Islands, opting to create four smaller man-made isles. Late 2018 will see the opening of Deera's first large-scale debut, its Night Soup, the world's largest night market with over 5,000 shops and almost 100 restaurants and cafes. If shopping indoors during a UAE summer is more your style, Deera Mall with its retractable roof atrium and over 1,000 stores might just be paradise. The mall will serve as the centerpiece of Deera Island's boulevard, which will feature retail space and at least 16 residential towers. By 2020, two of the four islands will hopefully be developed and completed, with 250,000 people living on them. Next is the World Island. The World, another Nikhil project, kicked off in 2003 and consists of 300 small islands constructed into a world map. Another victim of the 2008 financial crisis, the world's progress halted by 2013. Unfortunately, the world island is sinking. Despite this erosion issue, developer Kleindienst Group is hoping to revive the world in a big way with the launch of the Heart of Europe by 2020. Six Kleindienst-owned islands round out the project, each providing visitors a slice of very high-end European life complete with underwater villas, aka floating seahorses, five-star hotels, and even streets lined with manufactured snow. Lastly, the Blue Waters. Giving Nikhil a run for its money is Maras Holdings with its Blue Waters project that began in 2013, opening by late 2018 or early 2019 with an observation wheel, and Dubai, that will put the London eye to shame. You've guessed it, it will be the world's largest. Blue Waters is aiming to become Dubai's family-friendly tourism hotspot. So there you have it, Dubai Dream City, where the wealthy flourish and architectural wonders have no bounds. Don't forget to subscribe to Trending Updates for more luxury-fueled experiences made for the elite people like you.